Hi, I'm Paul, the Running Shoe Guru. This is Marathon Handbook, and this is a look at my choice of the top road racing shoes for 2023. So we've got a great big selection of shoes here from pretty much all the brands. Now, I'm I'm sure we might have missed one. I, I, I don't know. I've kind of wrapped my brain. If you've spotted one that missed, comment, comment below. You can also comment which is your favourite as well. But do remember, please, to subscribe to the channel as well. And you can do that by hitting the subscribe button. So we're going to look at a great big selection of all the shoes, carbon plated, carbon rods, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to choose my six personal favourites. So please bear in mind. Mind. These are my six personal preferences. All these shoes are great. I've run anything from 10k to marathons in these shoes, done lots of sessions on the road and the treadmill. Um, and some of them we've looked at previously in other videos. If we have, I'll put a link up on the, the, the top of the corner there. Um, but these are my personal opinions on the best six road racing shoes for 2023. So this shoe up here, actually, for those that spotted it in uh, some of the other videos, this is the Fila Racer from the year 2000, 2001. Uh, this was the original version, the original colorway. This one signed by Paul Turgat himself um, from a world record holder from Berlin 2003. Not in these shoes. Um, but what was special about the, the, uh, the Fila Racer back in 2000? Well, carbon plated. There you go carbon plate in there. So we've had carbon plated racing shoes for 20 odd years. Nothing new, but at the time this was really groundbreaking, had a really responsive kind of, felt like nothing else, very springy. There was an Adidas shoe as well um, that did feel um, very similar with that massively springy kind of toe off. But here in the UK, Feel Eraser was very, very popular. What we need to look at, we need to whittle this very wide selection down. I'm going to whittle it down to the top six. And this is in no particular preference or no particular order, but let's um, let's reduce this selection. Under Armour Velocity Elite, um, probably the last uh, major brand to bring a carbon plated shoe to the market. Great shoe. Um, Sharon Ledecky did win um, the women's category of the New York Marathon last year in this shoe. So it has got pedigree, but why is it not making the top six? Well, for me, um, it does like, um, I, I would like something that feels a little bit softer, has a little bit more cushioning, shall we say. Again, cushioning is a very personal preference as to the volume of the cushioning and how soft or responsive you think it feels. This shoe does feel lively, responsive and energetic. It's got that one piece kind of molded outsole, midsole. Um, so it keeps the weight down and it is a very agile shoe. It's good for twists and turns, um, things like that. Whereas some shoes don't cope with bends and turns very well. So it feels very stable. Um, but again, um, you know, there are six shoes better than it you know so a great shoe got an individual video on this shoe we'll put a link up in the corner and we also chatted with one of the developers doug smiley about this shoe so he explains what went into it so you can watch a video that explains more about the under armor velocity pro um, elite rather but um it's not going to make us top six today Okay, another one that's not going to quite make the top six, and that's perhaps because there are other better shoes from Puma. This was Puma's second carbon plated shoe, the Puma Fast R Nitro. Quite a crazy, unusual looking thing. We've got this um, decoupled heel and forefoot with the carbon plate connecting the two. So that keeps the weight down. Any it's kind of got a little bit of inflexibility there, but because we've only got the nitro form in the forefoot um, and kind of compression molded EVA in the heel, it is stable, but it feels a lot more aggressive, really. Um, the heel is a little bit firm, um, but there are other Puma shoes in um, that are slightly better. I mean, for me, 5K, 10K, um, very aggressive if you're on the top of the get top of your game rather um and you're feeling fast and you know you're really going to attack it up on your toes then great shoe but not making the final cut today Sukoni N Dolphin Pro. Sukoni, another brand with more than one carbon plated race shoe in this lineup so the pro has to go um 
the Elite is a nicer shoe, in my opinion, than the Pro. Um, prior to the Elite, this shoe um, would have been maybe in my top three selection of racing shoes, particularly for half marathon and marathon distance. Um, still a great shoe. Um, durability, mm, not quite as good as I would like it to be, to be honest. Um, and that's in terms of the kind of the feel of the, um, the form. In the long term, it seems to feel a little bit flatter, a little bit lower drop in the Sukorni. Um, so in the heel, it did feel a little bit dead um, after maybe, I don't know, 200 miles maybe. But um, great shoe, um, lots of fans for it. But again, not making the top six today. Also one that has to go from the lineup, not going to make it into the final six. Um, I can I can practically hear some people screaming at the screen now as well. So add your comments below, which shoes are your favourites? Um, I'd ask Prime X, illegal, 50 mil, 40 mil limit. Sorry guys, has to go. It's not going to make the top six. It is a great shoe though. I mean, I really enjoy running in this shoe. Yes, quite narrow given that 50 mil stack height. Um, does feel a little bit unstable if you're doing a twisty course, but running in a straight line, unbelievable. Um, I think a lot of people would be wearing this if it was legal. Then again, you know, other brands would be uh, making shoes with that bigger stack as well, which is quite interesting because we come on to the Nike Alpha Fly. So, Nike Alpha Fly 2, Elliot Kipchoge's shoe of choice and the only shoe to go sub two in the marathon, not making the top six for me. Um, of course, Vaporfly is the obvious alternative and I think it's it's very close on people who prefer uh, the Alpha Fly or the Vaporfly. In fact, I did a shoe count video at the Manchester Marathon here in the UK recently. Um, you can see all the figures. We'll put a link up there. So if you want to watch that video, um, see what um, the first 273 people in that race were wearing, um, all finishing between 230 and 250. So, you know, a small chunk of people, but the figures are quite surprising. So check that video out. Um, Alpha Fly. Um, surprisingly, um, how can we compare here? Let's line them up. Prime X, 50 mil stack. Alpha Fly, 39.5 mil stack. Um, mm, interesting. Um, Alpha Fly legal. Prime X banned. Um, for me, Alpha Fly is a great shoe. You really notice that bounce, that spring off, but Personally, I feel like I need to work a little bit harder to get the most from this shoe. You need to be almost landing a bit here and, and pushing off. And it feels almost like there's too much shoe. So great for long, faster training runs. Um, but for race day, I want something that's a little bit more um, nimble, a little bit softer and not quite as rigid under the foot. I know there's going to be a lot of... Um, a lot of comments about that one, but for me, Vaporfly wins over Alpha Fly, so Alpha Fly is not making the top six today for me. Another rather interesting looking shoe from Puma, the um, the Puma Fast Forward. Very interesting shoe. So we've got this steep cutaway heel and this four foot um, full length carbon plate in their nitro form. Super lightweight, minimalist upper. For me, I would describe this as a track shoe for the road. So I don't think we're going to see people running a marathon in this. 5k for me personally would be the limit. Ideally, I think road miles would be where this shoe is at. Remember the new balance 5280, um, a track spike for the road, perfectly, perfectly designed for road mile races. And um, saw some success in the Fifth Avenue mile in New York from athletes wearing that shoe. Um, I think this would be a similar type of model. It does feel soft, um, very efficient runners 
would get away with it for longer distances. I don't think it's going to suit for the marathon. This this top six as well isn't um, specifically looking at your marathon shoe. I'm looking at load shoes that are versatile that you can use from anything from 5k to a marathon. So all-rounders, the perfect all-round racing shoe, shall we say. Um, so the fast forward isn't going to make it, but a very, very interesting shoe. And it's good to see a brand kind of experimenting pushing the boundaries a little bit and um, really seeing what they can produce. Does feel amazing to run in, but for me personally, with my um, rather delicate Achilles, shall we say, um, keep it to um, much shorter distances in this one. So again, not making the top six today. Another shoe not making the final six and I know some people will be disappointed in me because this is a great shoe. Again, personal choice. Hoka Rocket X2, the best Hoka shoe today in my opinion. The first Hoka that we've got a super form in there. So we've got a soft responsive form. We've got the carbon plate. A totally different shoe to the Rocket X1. For me, it's kind of a little bit instable when you land it when you try the shoe on and you stand in the shoe it feels unstable it feels like it's very soft on the lateral side and it feels like you're going to roll over to that way in the shoe when you're running in it it's it's not quite as obvious but i think for me personally the lower drop in the hawker only four or five millimeters in this particular shoe um i like a little bit more um, so purely on that, again, I could get away with the shoe and it, and it did, it, it did feel great. Um, it feels, it feels fast. It feels bouncy. Um, but for me, it's not going to make my top six. Um, would it be number seven? Possibly. Um, the upper could be better. Not a lot of support in there. You don't really need it if you're landing mid to four foot and you're racing, but it is a bit of a squeeze getting on as well. I'm not sure triathletes would like that. And a lot of Hawker fans do tend to be come from the uh, the triathlon um, side of things. Um, be interesting to see how they get on. It's got this um, two double kind of gusseted straps around the midfoot on the tongue. And it does feel a bit of a, because there's not a lot of structure going on here, I wonder how they might get this shoe on in a hurry. Um, but yeah, again, hypercritical, still a great shoe, Hawker Rocket X2. And finally, from that selection, we're down to seven remaining shoes. Um, this one isn't going to make the top six. Asics Metaspeed Edge Plus, this one. I'm considering the Edge and the Sky Plus to be very similar shoes. There is a slight difference. Um based on whether you're a cadence runner, a runner that increases their step count to speed up or their stride length. Now, the edge is essentially more like the original um, meta speed, okay? Um, but, and, it, and for me personally, it's got the more aggressive locker or carbon um, locker shape through the forefoot and it does feel better. Why isn't it making the top six? Well, with, with it's a hard choice really so i'm being hypercritical for all these shoes now um the, sh the it's a soft cushioning i would like it to be i think when i've when i've got tired in this shoe it feels not quite as soft and not quite as springy there is a good toe off and it's got that exaggerated rocker on the toe off there but it just feels a little bit flatter um, and as I tire, it seems to doesn't give me that, that zip. It's a great shoe. If, if, you know, if I had to do any distance race and this was the only shoe I had available, I wouldn't have any, any hesitation setting off and really going for it in the shoe. But we're trying to be hypercritical and cut it down to um, the top six. So, sorry, the Asics Metaspeed Sky Edge whichever, um, I'm bundling them both together, um, isn't going to make it today, but still a great shoe. Okay, so like they say on all the best um, TV quiz shows and talent shows, in no particular order, these are the top six road racing shoes that I'm selecting for 2023. And I'm going to give the kind of the top five, and I will pick out my personal favourite as well, 
for the number one selection. But numbers two to five, uh, two to six rather, in no particular order, um, all fantastic shoes and all have very um, good cases to support them for any race really from 5k to marathon. The Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, you've seen this one about, it looks crazy with that steep cutaway on the heel. Measures almost 50 mil here, but officially with the World Athletics <laughs> measurements, 39 mil stack where it's measured thanks to a big cutaway in here and this um, chamfered edge on the heel. Um, so it creates a steep rocker. Um, when you, you it's, it's strange because when you are running in it, you don't really, even for me as a heel striker sometimes, it, you don't feel like you're rocking, you know, landing aggressively on the back, but it does kind of encourage to you to land here and it flicks you forward. So it's got a carbon nylon um, mixed in carbon infused nylon plate in here um, and it it really does the the combination of the curve of the plate and this kind of sweet spot from here to here this rocker it does pivot the foot forward very quickly um, it is it, it is quite a narrow footprint it can feel a little bit unstable but um, for shorter races I think for me, it worked well for 5K. Um, I did a 5K in this shoe. Felt really good, felt really aggressive. For longer races, for me personally, I don't think I could keep such an efficient form that would maximise the benefit of, of, the, of, of the features of this shoe. So I think you need, really need to be on your A game, really going for it. Um, if you're using it for half marathon or marathon. I know a few guys who did run Amsterdam marathon in the shoe and got PBs last year in it. Um, so it clearly works, clearly got a lot of fans. It looks very different, but um, here we are. Yep, certainly makes the top six. And again, nice to see something a little bit outside the box, pushing the boundaries, not just following a carbon copy um, reproduction of every other shoe that's on the market. So that's the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. So we looked at um, two Puma shoes so far, but which is the best one? And do they make the top six choices? Well, yes, they do. And they do purely on value because at, let me double check, at £175. So the only shoe in my top six selection, less than £200 here in the UK, and it's significantly less at £175, is the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite two um, brands. Come on, let's have one word for the shoe. One, 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 um, one name and um, one number if we must at the end. So, um, Nitro Elite two, um, full length carbon plate, light, fast, springy, responsive. Puma's first carbon plated racing shoe, and then the fast forward and the fast R came after that. Um, but I think this is still the best. Um, great price point, not quite as aggressive as some of the other shoes, but, um, you know, I think unless you are significantly under three hours, let's say for the marathon, do you need such an aggressive shoe? You want a softer, smoother ride. I know a couple of guys and some of them do watch the channel. They'll know who they are and they're really, um, and they've tried other shoes that I've mentioned as well, but found them too aggressive. Whereas this one can settle into a nice pace. Uh, a friend of mine ran a 20 minute PB recently in a pair of these, going from 350 to um, 329. So he feels it's just a nice smooth riding shoe, just enough bounce and it's long term comfort. So it gets a place in the top six for value for money. And we must consider that as well. In this day and age, when a lot of these shoes are coming in over the 200 price pound pound price point. We have to be um, considerate of price, conscious of price. So a great value shoe in the um, Nitro Elite 2 from Puma. And having talked about great value shoes coming in under £200, here we have the Sukoni Endorphin Elite at £280. Now, when this shoe looks really quite um, um, drastic as well, aggressive toe off, the double layer here and the colouring makes it look a lot more aggressive. Um, the kind of the, the toe off 
is um, slightly different, the rocker, shall we say. Um, cutaway exposed carbon fiber plate in there as well. A sleek one piece um, four foot rubber there, very similar to the Adidas as well. I'm not sure it's the same continental rubber. Um, one thing we've kind of got an exposed piece of foam on the medial side of the heel. So I've done about 30 miles in these so far. Um, and I have been careful. Some of that's been on the treadmill, some on the roads. Um, not much sign of scuffing, to be honest. Other shoes have been worse than that. But um, I am keeping an eye on it. I hope it doesn't wear out too quickly. Um, really different upper on this. Again, very soft. Um, kind of absence of a heel counter in here but it has this strap to kind of provide some support um, and this broad opening in the midfoot with the band in there that wraps under the carbon fiber plate to hold the midfoot securely this is um the hg compound from Sacconi, so it feels slightly different to the endorphin speed and the endorphin pro it feels a little more durable. It has a nice, soft, springy ride. But when you're running in it, it kind of feels like it's going to get better the further you go in the shoe. So I did a 10 mile tempo in this. Again, I've not, I've not raced, uh, running it that much, to be honest. But it did feel to give a consistently responsive and relatively aggressive ride for the whole of that 10 mile tempo. So this would be an option for me for longer races, um, but I think it's certainly one of the contenders for the top spot. Not the top spot today, but the Endorphin Elite is certainly one of the best carbon plated racing shoes around for 2023. The New Balance Fuel Cell SC Elite 3. Okay, again, this, okay, it's top six, one of the top three for me. <laughs> um, really nice shoe. The best version of the Elite to date. One and two, I found a little bit too soft in the heel, a little bit unstable. Um, I'm not sure what they've changed, to be honest, that's made this more stable. I think the the carbon plate, the um, energy arc, as they call it, I think they've got more of a kind of a concave shape to it. And that is stabilising things. We've got a bit of a flared heel as well, slightly wider um, footprint. Um, if you like on the on the ground when you're landing, that creates a bit of stability. And maybe the fuel cell um, form has changed a little bit. Whilst it's named fuel cell, you know, they can tweak these compounds a little bit. So nice and soft, very smooth ride through and a nice aggressive toe off. Um, I was I was entered for the Manchester Marathon here in the UK earlier this year. I wasn't quite in shape. I still had my number, so I did run the first 10 miles in that race. And I was considering this an option for marathon racing for 2023. So I did wear this shoe. Felt great. Um, really, really nice. One piece kind of upper, seamless inside. It looks very striking as well. It just looks fast, doesn't it? Um, the only issue I did have... Um, and it wasn't a deal breaker, so it still it still makes the cut off. You know these top six shoes. Um, I did feel. Let's zoom in here. The laces are using this stitched band, and the laces are looping under it. Now on the inside, I did feel um, kind of on the navicular bone in there. It was a little bit proud, so I was careful with my choice of socks. I wore a slightly thicker sock, and that seemed to take care of it. So. Just be careful kind of lacing them, just get it right. Um, you can kind of slide this lace up and down a little bit for a bit of adjustment. You can see, you know, from there. Um, but it's not a deal breaker. I like the way the Achilles, the, the heel on the Achilles flares away. So we've got no pressure on the Achilles there. Just everything about it, really nice, soft, comfortable shoe. Um, it is definitely top six carbon racer for 2023. The Adidas Adios Adi Zero Pro 3. Okay, so we have got a 39 mil 
stack in the heel, six mil drop, 220 pounds in the UK. So it's over that 200 price pound, um, 200 pounds price point. Um, you can find it for about 180. Adidas usually have sales on if you hang around a little bit on their website, you might find it discounted. But with a lot of these shoes, um, they are tricky to, to find really good discounts. You need to watch um, for when the brands are offering them in sales, Black, Black Friday and so on. So the, the Pro 3. Um, departure from the carbon plate in that it's got the carbon energy rods. Now these run through the forefoot. You can see them exposed there following the metatarsals. So similar effect to a carbon plate in the forefoot and you can see the very aggressive rocker cut away to expose the um, the energy rod under the fifth metatarsal here on the, uh, the lateral side of the forefoot. So you've got the rods, you've got the aggressive um, rocker on the forefoot as well. Really great shoe, feels nice, fast, um, springy feel to it. Um, I ran um, okay, so at the moment, my I would say when I'm in good shape, I'm running about 16.30 for 5k. Um, I ran Berlin Marathon 2.39, so that's where I'm at. So fast training paces, um, between 5 and 5.30s is what I kind of usually target for anything mile reps and below. Um, and then tempo runs around 6 to 6.30s. Um, this shoe, great at um, any of those paces and I have found myself reaching for it um, you know for sessions tempo runs that kind of thing I do also do a lot of my speed work on the treadmill as well um, but you've got continental rubber on the outsole of this shoe whilst it's almost slick kind of um, motor racing tyre effect on the outsole no, no issues ever with traction um, so that's not a concern despite there only being a very thin slick outsole on it the upper fits nicely um, a little bit unusual my only thing that i wasn't quite keen on at first is this rather complicated over engineered kind of lacing system in the forefoot we could have done away without that but once you're used to it not an issue but definitely a top six shoe the adidas adios adi zero pro three so that makes the top six today so that means which is going to be my number one pick of race shoes for 2023. Okay, here it is. It's not going to come as any surprise if you've watched um, from the beginning. Vaporfly 2. Now, Vaporfly 3 has launched. I haven't raced in a pair as yet. I have run the majority of my races um, in the Vaporfly 2 in 2022, including Berlin 239, thank you. Um, so I clearly enjoy this shoe, everything about it. It's one of the originals, you know, okay, after the next percent, um, the Vaporfly 2 is the one that's really been doing the business with the results. Um, Nike kind of stole the lead a little bit, so everybody's chasing them. So they've they've got this shoe very well established. Again, look at the figures from the shoe count video. Um, phenomenally popular. It does everything right for me personally. I know some people are torn between this and Alpha Fly, but for me, it's light, it's aggressive, it's versatile. It feels fast um, when you're up on your toes, pushing hard in a 5K, but it's smooth and comfortable enough for a marathon. Um, I don't really know what else is to be said about the uh, the Vaporfly, but it's certainly my favourite shoe and my number one pick. Another interesting um, element when it comes to Nike and the Vaporfly, yes, you can buy it today full price, the Vaporfly 2 at um, around 225, 235 pounds in the UK, but Nike often, and now the Vaporfly 3 has arrived, often discount this shoe. Um, and I did pick up a pair just before Christmas at 101 pounds. So if you can get it at the right money, it's also one of the best value shoes. So keep an eye out on the uh, on websites for the discounted, but you really can't go wrong, my number one pick. That said, of course, I've got a pair, Vaporfly 3. 
um, and I hope to race a half marathon in Manchester this weekend, box fresh. Um, I'm going to race in them, I'm going to wear them straight out of the box and we'll see how we get on. Um, I don't know what kind of shape I'm in, I've not raced properly, I've done um, a few park runs uh, which are kind of low key time trial type events we have here in the UK. I've done a few park runs this year, um, I've not raced on anything further than um, 5k so we'll see how it goes. Vaporfly 3, I've tried it on, I've walked around in it and it feels very good. But um, my top pick from that selection, Vaporfly 2, I've got a feeling this might replace it. Um, video coming next week on the differences and how I got on in the half marathon. But please do comment below. I am sure this one is going to generate a lot of interest. Keep following. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, let us know which is your favourite shoe and let us know your favourite race in that shoe as well. Interesting to see if there's any difference on preference between your distances from 5k to marathon um, and the types of um, twisty turny courses, straight flat courses, that kind of thing. What suits you? What's your favourite carbon plated shoe? Do you have more than one carbon plated shoe? Which shoe are you most looking forward to? Put it all in the comments below. Let's um, carry this on. But thanks for watching as always. And tune in next week and we'll see how we get on in the Vaporfly 3. Bye bye now.